What a great, what a great audience for Monday. Uh, doesn't even feel like a Monday to me. All right. Uh, so, thank you. So, do you hear what China did? Yeah, they cloned super cows. Chinese scientists say they've cloned three calves that once grown will be capable of producing 50% more milk than the average American cow. So they're putting our cows out to pasture like voters did to Hillary. <laughs> that is a reach, but I approve. By the way, I believe we have a picture of these new super cows. That's off to a good start. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk about giant balloons, all right? No. Not those. I mean, the Chinese surveillance balloon shot down off the coast of South Carolina. China should have said there was a boy inside. That's what I would have done. Then I would have shot it down. <laughs> because I'm a bad man. Anyway, there was lots of speculation over the balloon's sudden appearance. Rumor has it Joe insisted that it was just a full moon. <laughs> Maybe it came from Hunter's birthday party from last Saturday. Yeah, you know, he loves his balloons. You know, normally if they're full of cocaine and shoved up a drug mule's ass, but still. <laughs> you know, Hunter and the balloon have a lot in common. They're both paid for by China and high as Foreign, uh, Chinese Foreign Ministry says it was a civilian weather balloon that strayed off course and entered U.S. airspace by accident. And like most illegal border crossers, it just decided to stick around. But that excuse is as believable as Kilmeade's alibi when Fox's Christmas tree was torched. Yeah, blame it on the homeless guy. China called our response an overreaction, but then issued a threat of further actions in response, possibly in the form of streamers, cake, and confetti. Because it was a balloon audience. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Whew. Sometimes you got to goose them. But what a journey the balloon had, right? It got to see more states than Forrest Gump on a jog. And the public got a good look at it, too. Videos were all over social media, people filming it from their backyards. It was the best thing to happen in Montana since Custer's last stand. It was the only thing to happen in Montana since Custer's last stand. And perhaps it was the public who forced this administration to get off their fat, lazy asses and do something about this. If people weren't documenting it, would the White House have even acted at all? Or would they have let it float to Europe where it would end up dating a woman with armpit hair? <laughs> yeah. No one deserves that, not even a balloon filled with explosives. The White House says Biden was first briefed on Tuesday, three days after it entered the U.S. air defense zone. And worse, the response was softer than Mike Lindell's Giza Dream Sheets. <laughs> Have you tried them? Have you tried them? Really? The Pentagon says the balloon wasn't a threat, but admitted it could be maneuverable, which is more than we can say about Joe. So is this really a big deal? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. That's what I hate about these stories. Suddenly, everyone's an expert on whatever it is we're talking about. And I don't know. So I'll refer you to retired Army General John Ferrari. He says the flight might have been to gauge America's ability to detect incoming threats and to find holes in our air defense warning system. So the balloon was up, and I mean really up, to no good. <laughs> Which brings us back to this. <laughs> yeah. The trans teacher with the massive knockers. There was another case where someone was up to no good, but people were too scared to call it out for fear of being labeled as bigoted. And also popping those breasts would have sent the teacher gusting all the way to China. <laughs> and with China, we were also too scared to act quickly for fear of offense. And let's not forget the Kung Fu flu, right? It's been three years and we still have no answer from China on its origins, because questioning such things could be seen as racist, and it was. If only if it came, if only it came from Norway or Sweden, or perhaps the Osman family. <laughs> Here's the bottom line. I link this balloon story to the Ontario trans teacher with giant boobs. So for those playing the Gutfeld drinking game at home, you have to take two shots now. <laughs> 
and from two giant cups. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God Emily's here. No one would laugh. <laughs> So from fentanyl to TikTok, we've got major issues with China. And now just let a spy balloon casually cruise right over us like it was bringing Dorothy back to Kansas. If it were me, I would have steered the damn thing into the space needle. Because what's the point of having a space needle except to poke holes in space balloons? I mean, I bet the needle was just sitting there the whole time thinking, guys, I'm right here. Never going to get this opportunity again. In the meantime, I guess we can just take comfort in the fact that it took a balloon to remind us that we all share something in common. We hate when strangers get into our <laughs> And that the bigger problem for us is this conflict as sport. China unleashes a spy balloon, and it should unite every one of us across the country, all pointing upward. We should be pointing fingers at China and not at each other. But with the media, it's who can blame the other party first. But you know who I blame for that? Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hypocrite, but I know I am. And Joe was elected based on unifying, but instead cleaved us like a head of lettuce on Iron Chef. <laughs> but hopefully the next windbag we get rid of will be him. Here he is. Let's a welcome tonight's guest. You may recognize him from the last time you Googled a non-threatening white guy, <laughs> co-host of the Big Money Show, Brian Brenberg. <laughs> she was the only lawyer whose clients asked her to remain silent. Outnumbered <laughs> co-host Emily Campagno. <laughs> you know, critics said we'd never be able to book Time Out Magazine's Joke of the Year winner 2009 but here we are. <laughs> WesternRazor.com owner, David Angelo. <laughs> and finally, she's like a pretzel, twisted, salty, and better when smothered in hot mustard. Fox News contributor, Cat Tim. <laughs> So, David, why the hat? What's on your head? Well, you know, Greg, I've come on the show several times, and I'm always pumping the Western Razor Company, and I figure, you know what? I don't need to keep saying it. Let's just, let's just put it up here, get it out of the way, and then we can get down to business. It's not doing very well, is it? Yeah, you know, we, we can, <laughs> <laughs> I'm living in the YMCA, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We're talking about balloons here. You make razors. You must have your own. You could have probably solved this problem much faster than our daughter and president. Well, you know, I think uh, our operation is part of the reason why they sent that over here. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Made in America razors? Come on, we're threatening <laughs> the entire industry. <laughs> They're a little worried. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. But, you know, the weirdest thing about this mm -hmm. is, like, all you had to do is send a balloon over to spy. Yeah. Like, why did we make... U2s. Why yep. did we do, Esther? We made the fastest plane in history to fly over Russia. Gary, Francis Gary Powers, you know. Yes. This whole thing. All we had to do was go to Party City. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> lob one over Leningrad. Well, it's true. Why did we work so hard? It that's, is. It, that, where's my money? Well, that's the thing. It's like we got cheated. I, it's a huge balloon, too. I would have loved, I love big balloons. Don't you, Emily? Big balloons are fun, and they've used this fun for evil. I hate China for what they've done to our balloons. What do you think? They've ruined every birthday party from now on. <laughs> yes. What do you think about the public going up, watching it, and then the media turning it into the, uh, some kind of blame game? What do you make of this? Yeah, I think, well, I think that the administration is trying to turn this into a success story for President Biden when it's anything but, because what we do know so it entered our airspace. Three days later, he was informed. Was that because he wasn't trusted with the information? Is it because he doesn't have the respect of our defense and intelligence mm -hmm. communities? I'm not sure. But then he said he told them to shoot it down right away, which either they ignored or had a better plan. Either way, his fragility is on full display here. And 
First of all, I miss Secretary Pompeo and President Trump so much because under their watch, this would not have happened. The instant something from the CCP entered our airspace, violated international law and then our sovereign airspace, it would have been shot down over the Pacific, not the Atlantic. So the fact that he now pats himself on the back and says this is a success after it's collected who knows what, um, you know, intelligence, files of intelligence on, on the entire continental U.S., there's nothing successful about it. And the Chinese must have known we would shoot it down, which means it was worth it. Whatever modicum up to a huge amount of surveillance that they got during that journey was worth it to them, which means it was getting a whole, hot, a whole hell of a lot more than we expect. And I also think that it provides this sort of visual representation of what China's been doing for us for years, which is infiltrating our sovereign nation at any point. From cybersecurity to physical bases, our education system, TikTok, uh, everything, everything, Emily. everything Razors. they have invaded Razors. us. Razors, <laughs> Razors. Yeah, yeah. lawn furniture. <laughs> there you go. Now we just have the visual representation for it. So I hope that we keep our fingers in the sky, the middle one. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she is. Um, she is filthy. Uh, Brian, welcome to the show. This is your first Thank time. Thank you. I'm so it's glad to be long, here. It's been a long time coming, but, you know, I've heard good things. I'm glad you could do the balloon thing 20 times when I came, too. That's really great. The kids at home will love that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. What do you, uh, do you think this could have been handled better? Well, there's so many excuses being made, and most of them are really bad, but the worst one is that there's no room in Montana to take this down. Like, Montana is the Atlantic Ocean of states, okay? If you can take a balloon down, you can do it there. The Biden family must have never taken a road trip in Montana yeah. to believe that you couldn't do it. But before that, it was in Alaska. This thing was in the Aleutian Islands, a Chinese spy balloon, and they knew about it there for two days, yeah. and they didn't do anything. Of all the excuses they've made, the worst one is that they couldn't have acted preemptively. They could have. And as a result, China got who knows what kind of intelligence from this. They saw how attractive our mule, our, our moose are. <laughs> how do you say plural of moose? Meese. Meese? Yeah. <laughs> really? Not too bad. It's not. He had me there for a minute there. <laughs> he, did. he did. But there is an argument, Kat, that if we were to shoot them down, what if it was filled with, like, COVID spores or something mm. like that? Or it was filled with something that, if you detonated, would explode and then kill everybody. But then in Alaska and Montana, that's 12 people. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm kidding. I love those people. Sometimes <laughs> say I love them too much. I have some great customers in Montana. Yeah. Yeah. I just love them. <laughs> I, look, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a spy balloon expert. <laughs> but I should have been. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I could have been in these meetings when they were, like, designing this thing. I could have been like, hey, guys, mm -hmm. it's kind of big. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very sneaky. No, it isn't at all. It's not sneaky at all. Like, I didn't know what a spy balloon looked like, but now that I do, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> nothing else looks like that. Why does that have to be so big? <laughs> I would think it would like, be... You'd have to make it smaller. Someone in the meeting somewhere should have said, hey, <laughs> we should make it, maybe make it more smaller. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, when you wear a wire, they don't put, like, lights in it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, I, we're gonna see it, but I, you know... Again, not an expert, but that is a huge missed opportunity on my part. Yeah, that's true. You should be thinking <laughs> your career choices at, during this story. It's raised definitely more questions than it's answered, right? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.